Today is the fourth Sunday of Lent, cycle B. The fourth Sunday of Lent is all called Letare Sunday, meaning to rejoice because we're halfway through Lent and East is coming soon. The book of Chronicles tells us the story of a nation once favored by God. God had made a covenant with them. They were to be his people and he was to be their only God. To enjoy his protection and his blessings, they had to live pure and devout lives. However, we learn from today's readings that the leaders, the priests, and the people were practicing every kind of abomination in the sight of God. God sent messengers to warn them, but they mocked them and continue to glory in their shame. By ignoring and rejecting God, they lost their protection and their enemies came and destroyed their city, Jerusalem, and their temple. Many were killed and all leaders and skilled workers surviving were taken into exile. However, after 70 years in exile, God had pity on them and used Cyrus of Persia to free them and allow them to return home. God is a God of love and mercy and is always desirous of renewing his relationship with those he loves. A careful study of the history of the people of Israel indicates that when they were suffering, they were always listened to God. But once they became prosperous, they strayed from his commandments. This story is not just part of the history of the people of Israel. It is also the story of some of our lives and our nation. The main reason why some believers reject God's teaching are, once they become wealthy, they believe they do not need God. They falsely believe they can even buy happiness. They reject or refuse to accept the Creator God as the supreme authority and teacher. They believe that they have the right to decide what is good and bad for themselves. However, what may be beneficial to them may be harmful for others. For example, they may exploit workers for higher profits for themselves it is beneficial to them, but bad for the workers. Without guidance from God, we tend to become selfish and greedy without realizing it. Dictatorial and communist leaders are always threatened by religion because religion always tells us that they, the leaders, are not ultimate authority. If you wish to recognize potential dictators, look to those who refuse to obey God's laws, especially on the sanctity of life and sexual morality. They will tell you what to believe, and if you do not, you may even lose your job. The consequences of disobedience in the symbolic narrative story of Adam and Eve was the loss of eternal life. We have just read what happened to the chosen people who disobeyed God. If we as individuals 
for as a nation disobey God, and we are disobedient, we shall have to endure suffering, which is the consequence of sin. What are some of the sins, abominations, that are prevalent in our culture, and yet their harmful effects of which do not seem to shock us? Greed, selfishness, abuse of power, dishonesty, divorce, adultery, every kind of sexual perversion, abuse of drugs, alcohol, and abortion. Planned Parenthood proudly boasts that they are responsible for over 64 million legal abortions since 1972. How many people are 64 million? You know, if you wiped out every man, woman, and child in Canada, you would only have killed 38 million. If you wiped out all the people of Cuba, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Jamaica, or do it only add up to 35? You know, somebody boasted that a man, that he had raped more than 20 women, you would be disgusted to be proud of the death of 64 million babies. It's to glory in one's shame. This Lent, we cannot only focus on our individual sins, but on the sins of our community, our nation. Entering the heaven is based on individual sins, but prosperity of the community, according to the Old Testament, is dependent on following the ways of the Lord. When the kingdom of Israel and Judah ignore God's laws, and were filled with injustice and practiced every type of sin, their kingdoms were destroyed and many were sent into exile. At the time of their destruction, there were holy people in them, in those cities. But God's judgment was upon the nations and not the individuals. Even if we do not engage in these sins, we still have to repent for them because collectively we are guilty. Lent is also a time for meditation on the paradox of the cross, a symbol of suffering, death, and defeat, and death, and at the same time, a symbol of God's love for us because he gave up his life for us. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that anyone who believes in him might not perish but attain eternal life. The cross of Jesus is also a symbol of victory because it resulted in the resurrection. Like Jesus, we prefer to avoid the cross rather than embrace it. Even Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane said, Father, if it is possible, can you take away the cup of suffering? Suffering can bring us closer to God or move us further from Him. However, the older ones among us on reflection we we'll realize that our sufferings have shaped our lives, increased our faith, and brought us closer to God. For the younger ones, suffering will test your faith because God has the ability to make good out of evil. If we stick with him in difficult times, he shall bring us to a better place. It is, every, it is very important to understand and to believe that God loves us dearly. 
While we were still sinners, he suffered and died for all of us. Some of us repented, others did not. He does not despise those of us who did not respond to his act of love. It is his hope and desire that those who did not respond to his love and who we see as evil and wicked, he sees as lost and hopes that one day they shall come to the light of truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life.